What is going on out there, peeps? Excuse my silence over the last couple of days. I've been really deep diving and involved with this Twitter exposure of a lot of corruption. And, and that include being on the interview with uh, Elon Musk, listening to what he had to say. Um, I was able to record a big chunk of it, and I'm sure there's other people out there that have longer versions. And whenever you're doing editing of a video, it can take a very long time to do it. So I had like five hours of interview. And it's literally taken me a couple of days just to go through and fix it. If you've ever heard uh, Elon Musk in an interview, a raw interview. <laughs> uh, Elon Musk has a lot to say. But there's also times where he'll have long spaces in between sentences. And sometimes halfway through a sentence, he has a long pause and then continues the sentence. He also has a habit of saying, um, and, and so... Uh, quite often. So I wanted to go through and clean a lot of that up because I think everything that Elon Musk said in this interview is so important. I can't stress this enough. It is extremely important that people hear what he had to say. Uh, and in addition to that, the people that were running this interview were talking over one another that, that with people falling off the conference calls, including Elon Musk. So I know you guys didn't want to hear all that crap. They spoke over one another. So I just wanted to clean it up just a little bit. So I want to encourage you as much as possible to go over and listen to the interview. I learned a ton of things about social media. I learned a lot about what's going on with our FBI, our government, uh, you know, these elections and everything else. It's just unbelievable the things that are coming out. Um, I also had an opportunity to watch the loony left, the media, and these bots. I learned what a bot was. I knew what a bot was. Now I know how to identify a big chunk of them and then watch them in action. Let me go over what I'm talking about. You probably heard already in the media that Elon Musk was talking about charging $8 for the blue check verification. And people lost their mind. Oh, it's the end of the world. And all of these politicians were losing their mind, the media were losing their mind. They're like, oh, this guy's a billionaire. Why does he need more money? Well, Elon Musk explained that it's not about the money. He explained that the way Twitter was set up, you know, it's got some old software that he's having to update. But the way they had it set up is pretty much almost anybody can get a blue check mark, And that included bots. And the blue check marks were supposed to verify that these people were real. That's not the case. When he went on there, he found that a ton of... A ton of the blue check marks were actually bots. And this allows our government to set up these warehouses of computers. And they can all go on at the same time. And the person can program in there what it is they want to do. If they want to attack a subject, attack people. If they want to attack a, a politician, uh, they could do that. And they use these bots to discredit the truth. They use these bots to attack people with opposing opinions that's threatening to them. And so by charging $8, it would make governments around the world, if they have a warehouse full of bots, pay a, a chunk of money just to be on there. So he felt like that would make it harder for governments to create bots or for another entity to create bots that could go on social media to try to sway the public's opinion on something one way or another. Then he also wants a two-part verification, which is awesome. He said between the pay and the fees... The two-part verification, the governments or whoever the entity is that has bots would have to pay an enormous amount of money to set everything up, plus pay the verifications. And even if you verify, check this out, you're going to have to refresh your verification every now and then. And the reason for that is people sell verified accounts and these government agencies or these separate entities altogether buy them. So this is his way of combating bots, plus he's creating software to identify them, so that Twitter is a more balanced social media now. I have been having a field day myself. I've been able to talk about subjects I have not been able to talk about on social media platforms for so long. So let's get into this. I brought this clip up because I thought it was funny. I said the same thing, and so I wanted to share this. Jack Pasebic, he said, and with just one mean tweet, Donald Trump got the entire media and Democratic Party to defend the Constitution. They have been anti-Constitution for so long. And then Trump made a stupid comment that we should end the Constitution and reinstall him as president. 
I said in a tweet, I knew what Donald Trump was trying to say. What he should have said was just said to quote, there is no difference between an, an unjust king and a thief. And people would have knew exactly what he was saying, which is similar to what he's trying to say. But he definitely didn't come out right. And then I went on to explain to people what that, where that quote comes from. And it has a lot to do with our right of revolution and, our, and, and the right to declaration of independence. If you're a person who doesn't uh, like to study a little bit or read up a little bit on our constitution and the Declaration of Independence and our Bill of Rights, this will go over a lot of people's heads. Basically, they were making a Declaration of Independence. Locke was trying to explain to the people that the government was stacked up against their cause and that when a government itself becomes unjust and slanted and doesn't even follow their own rules, that's when it's time for the people the right to revolt against their government. And in the Declaration of Independence, it tells the American people as clear as day, when a time comes that your own government does not represent your interests, but represents their own personal interests and their decisions hurt the American people, that's when it's time for you to revolt. That's when it's time for you to dissolve the current government and establish a new one all over again. So that's kind of where Trump was going. But he's hinted to the Declaration of Independence many times before. Before we get started, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not a subscriber, please do so. Because when you do, it helps out the channel. And I certainly do appreciate it. If you're thinking about buying gold and silver, head on over to our friends at Money Metals Exchange. The link will be down below in the description. If you are a first-time buyer and you spend more than $100... Use promo code PIMPY SILVER. Yes, it has changed. P I M P Y S I L V E R. So if you're watching this video and it's an older video, make sure you check on current videos because the code is going to be changing from time to time from now on. Also, I can be found on other platforms. Everybody knows I have my own website, Pimpy's News Network. Over here, I post videos that I can't get away with over on YouTube. Also, I have a group on Facebook called Pimpy's Investment Chat. Over here, we do talk about gold, silver, cryptocurrencies, as well as foreign currency investments. Come on over here and join us. It's free to do so. You can also come follow me on Twitter, MeWe, YouTube, and Odyssey. The links for all these platforms will be down below in the description. So for whatever reason, if I get removed off of one platform, you could find me on the others. So Elon Musk had exposed that there is a group of real people, you know, they have real accounts, they're real humans, that team up with bots. And they pretty much all pitch the same thing. You could tell by their tweets, they're all on the same page and the wordings that they use are pretty much all the same. You can see right here when Elon Musk bought Twitter, oh, the people on the left were panicking, man, there's good reason. They're exposing all the criminality on there, including questionable events that happened to our election. And not just that, the January 6th committee, things with the vaccines, uh, it's, it's all coming out and people need to wake up. And while I was there listening to him talk, I thought to myself, all hell is about to break loose. Because Twitter was one of the best weapons that the left had and it was just taken from them. And all their little nasty secrets going to come out because once Elon Musk owned Twitter, he had access to their servers and all the internal messaging. So we're starting to figure out some of these execs committed crimes by interfering with elections. It's all going to come out. But anyways, you can see right here, the memo had went out to their blue checkmark people and their bots to start attacking Elon Musk. And you can see the wording is almost the same. It says, imagine volunteering to do online PR work for the world's richest man on a Friday night. And you can see Ben Collins down here. Imagine throwing it all away to do the PR work for the richest man and for the richest person in the world. But you don't want to admit you're just doing PR for the world's richest person. So you can see as you go along through the different posts, they use the same wording. That's all planned, we're finding out. They coordinate this crap. None of them really have their own original thoughts. Can you imagine a plethora of tweets all using approximately the same wording? This is how you know they're coordinated. And that's what he was trying to point out. Again, some of these people are real human beings, but they're also 
coordinated with a bunch of bots to say the same thing. And that is to try to attack an individual or a company or a headline that's out there to try to discredit it. Getting people to think that this is nothing or that they're only doing this because they have their own agenda, which is just bullshit. And uh, these people are being exposed left and right on Twitter. And you can see it continues. Look at this. Doing PR work for the richest person in the world. Vampire Squad giving the PR to the world's richest billionaires. Look at this. But now he's just a PR outlet for the world's richest man. Do you see what I'm saying? This is how you know it's coordinated. You can see them over and over. All of them like the little robots. These people get paid money to push this crap out there. They do. So the humans get paid money to all be on the same page and they work in coordination with the bots. Still going on. <laughs> Making a deal to do the PR of the richest man in the world. Next, you're doing PR for the richest man in the world. Do you see how it's all in sync with one another? We knew this was going to happen when Trump came out and said that, you know, they should terminate the Constitution. That all of a sudden you definitely would see a huge army of politicians, bots, and human beings all working in unison. Now, don't get me wrong. The wording that Trump used was the wrong wording, and it looks bad. But also keep in mind what Trump was trying to remind people is that there are times which the Constitution can be suspended whenever you feel like you're all of a sudden under the rule of a tyrannical government is where he was going with it, and we're there now. But you can see all the tweets. They keep going on. And on. It's been going on for days now since Trump said this. They're all in unison. They're all saying the same thing, and they're going to keep going on for days as Twitter continues to expose the criminality and truth they're looking for any little thing to cling on to to keep people distracted from the real news, which is Twitter was involved with some real shysty stuff along with other social media groups, and it's all coming out. So the people on the left are trying like hell to cling on to every little stupid thing. Everything that Kanye West says, a dinner that Trump had, the fact that he says something stupid about the Constitution, and this is what they're clinging on to. Nobody commenting on a fact that people interfered with the election. They're not commenting about the fact that we had Joe Biden, when he was a candidate, giving orders to what can and cannot be on social media platforms. We had the FBI's involved with this. All this is coming out. Now, we've been talking about how corrupt the FBI is for quite some time. This just further proves that they are some very corrupt people. So what's the latest and greatest thing that all of a sudden magically pop up in more than one location as Elon Musk is exposing all the criminality between social media platforms and a political party? We see this, and you can see I already tweeted against this. Is you can always tell when the feds show up. Same sunglasses, same hats, and face covers along with khaki pants. Oh, great, I put gats. I'm sure I'm going to hear about it. But you can see here, watch right here. Look at how they all come forward. <laughs> This is how you know, look at the feds. Same pants, face coverings, hats. Oh, look it, here we go. We're a bunch of right wing extremists. Everybody turn towards the media. Let them see you. <laughs> this is so phony. There's only a small amount of idiots out there, so. Onward to victory. Onward to victory. If you guys can't see that these people are the feds, yeah, I'm talking about our intelligent agencies are also being exposed. That's another thing that's coming out from Twitter. And people should be able to see right through this. Now, I understand there are a lot of people out there who can believe that mainstream media are telling them the truth. So in my opinion, if you want the truth to come out, I don't care what political side you're on. I don't care if you're Democrat. I don't care if you're Republican, liberal, conservative, progressive, independent. I don't care what you are then you should join Twitter, support Twitter's movement, and then get the information out as it comes out. Because Elon Musk said, look, I turned over all the communications to a handful of people. They are sharing it with everybody else, good, bad, or ugly. That doesn't mean that Trump's going to come out of this smelling like roses. There might be some stuff in there that Trump did that's not illegal. We don't know. That's the crazy thing about the whole thing. No matter what, if political parties are coordinating and interfering in elections... And doing what they can to cover up stories of interest to the people. Doing all they can to cover up the truth and help hide criminality. Then the people should all stand up together.
and say something about this. But again, you can see right here, Liz Cheney seizes on Trump's call to terminate the Constitution. It is ironic that all of a sudden we see the Democrats wanting to protect the Constitution. And this is the kind of crap they're going to do is cling on to stupidest little things and say it over and over to keep people distracted from the truth exposing a lot of criminality. So just like before, you're going to see a lot of this same wording on here. Termination of the U.S. Constitution disqualifies him. He's, freedom, he's protected under the freedom of speech. If that's the case, then Obama never would have been president. That guy spoke out against the Constitution as well. It's funny how people forget the things that Obama said about the Constitution. You know, that it was only a piece of parched paper. Remember that? And that he also went out and said that the Supreme Court should decide court cases by using other means than the Constitution and our law. So how is that any different? And of course, Adam Kiss Hassinger. Anyways, you can go on and on. And they want to attack Trump about suggesting that we terminate the Constitution. When the truth of the matter, what he's saying is, when our government gets to where it is, this is a time that we're supposed to suspend the powers of the Constitution. In other words, the powers that the government has suspended to keep them from stopping you, to dissolve our current government, who's a big criminal organization that we're finding out, who does not represent the interests of the people, but it represents special interest groups and their own personal gains. That's it. Everybody has been complaining about this for a long time. That's exactly what Trump's talking about. What I love about reading these tweets and knowing what I know now, knowing what it is that Elon Musk has exposed, it's really easy to see who all the people are that are in lockstep with this movement on the left side. Who's all part of this criminal group and the people that they've hired to push their agenda. It's as obvious as day now. And they are panicking big time. So liberal hive mind had this up and I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share with you guys. It said, that's why the participants want the secret history of the 2020 election told, even though it sounds like a paranoid fever dream, a well-funded cabal of powerful people ranging across industries and ideologies working together behind the scenes to influence participation, change rules and laws, steer media coverage and control the flow of information. They were not rigging the election. They were forfeiting it. And they believe the public needs to understand the system fragility in order to ensure that democracy in America endures. This is how people like Katie Hobbs, John Fitterman, Joe Biden didn't even come out to do any type of interviews or debates, but somehow magically won their positions in politics. You know, Biden won the White House. John Fitterman, who can't even put a sentence together, won a Senate seat. Katie Hobbs won a very powerful position, the governor of Arizona. How did these people who wouldn't go into debates, wouldn't even go out and campaign, they just stood at home, all of a sudden won their elections? This is how they won them. Twitter was involved with election interference prior to Elon Musk taking over. Which takes me back to this again. It says, Democrats mentor. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. We see that all the time. The Democrats are often guilty of accusing people of what they're guilty of. For the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. And that's why the Democrats, along with the FBI and the media, have all the power to try to sway the thinking of the masses. And thus, by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. The interview was about five hours long. So by the time I got done editing it, it's just a little over two hours. I understand that's a long time, but I must encourage you guys to watch it and share with other people. The information in there is so important. I will make sure to post it on the Pimpy's News Network just in case. But I want to go ahead and encourage you guys to listen to the full interview. And you're going to learn so much about what's happening and what's about to come out. The information that's coming out is very, very dangerous to Elon Musk and those who are choosing to share the information. You got to understand that there's a huge agenda that's being pushed on the world, not just here in the United States. And these people will go through any extreme whatsoever, including creating false flag events to try to do what they can to occupy the headlines of the media in order to keep people from hearing about the truth of what's being exposed. 
So there's no doubt that what Elon Musk is doing is that important that they're willing to go through any extreme whatsoever to make sure the information doesn't go out. So I want to encourage you guys to go check it out. I'm about to post it here in a little while. Go ahead and share this information. Anyways, I look forward to you guys' comments. And the more I learn, I will share with you. So you guys let me know what you think. Are you guys ready to hear the truth? Do you really want to know the truth? And once you find out the truth, what are you willing to do for it? Anyways, that's it for now. I will get back at you later. I'm out.